else is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We say for children, but they are for everyone. This is going to be a difficult lesson to give out because it is about Todd Beamer. He says, be the one, let's roll. This means that Todd Beamer was one of the men that was on one of the planes that went down at 9-11. When you hear this story about this young boy, we're going to start with him as a young child, show you what a life that he lived, how obedient he was to the Word of God. His mother and father taught him the Word. His mother was a stay-at-home mom. He was taught the Word of God in his home. So he knew how to trust the Lord and believe that everything that happened was for his good. He was taught to pray. He knew this Bible verse. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, in Jesus' name, he will give it you. He will give it you. He knew that God had taught us in his word. And this is for every true believer. We're going to show this more and more and more. This is one of the Bible verses that most people say, I cannot ever do that. God doesn't command us to do anything that he will not do it for us. He says, now you must memorize this, Matthew 5, 44. I say unto you, now, this is what he says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do we love our enemies? And this has got a lot to do with these lessons as we learn what happened to Todd Beamer and his family. Not only was he a hero during this last plane that went down, but there were other men and women at 9-11 that did great, wonderful things that you could call them a hero. But they did things to save people. Todd Beamer, possibly, and those on his plane, stopped these terrorists, possibly from going to the White House or whatever building they were headed for and they did stop this. When we learn about the things that happened, it brings tears to our eyes just to think that this had to happen to anyone. But on that day, there were almost 3,000 people died, 2,800 and some. This is because terrorists are given to the devil. You are going to learn in these lessons that Satan is our enemy. He hates everything that God loves. So if you do not love, you are obeying Satan. He hates us with cruel hatred. God loves us. We have up here today what love is. The attributes of God, love. That means there's no word in the English language that could describe his love because these are attributes. God is love and he cannot do anything but love. He is love. Satan hates just the opposite. So his love is as high as heaven, as wide as the world, and as long as eternity, that means forever, his love forever, and as deep as death, because he went down into death, 
that we would not have to die. You must understand these truths. And his word says, because his loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise him. Now, when we talk about loving our enemies, you cannot love anyone the way God commands you to unless you're a child of God. So here he says to love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully uses you. Now, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful command, but it can only be done if we know the love of God. Now, we're going to read how wonderful God's love is. He says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 18. Well, it's verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. As a child of God, you're grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. There is not enough knowledge in this world to understand that God could love us so much that he sent his son to die for us, to die instead of us, that we will never die. So we're going to learn a lot in these lessons that will cause you to have tears, but you'll have tears of joy also, because this young man knew Christ at a very young age. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee that thy love passes knowledge. We thank Thee that Thou hast given to us eternal life. We thank Thee for forgiveness of sin. We thank Thee for the exceeding great and precious promises that are ours. We rejoice in Thee today that we can call Thee Father and that all things whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. So it's not Thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we're praying for 100 fold. And we thank Thee for allowing us today to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So as we get to this lesson, we're going to learn about what happened after the plane went down and Todd Beamer was on that plane. This happened in September and this was Christmas for his wife and the two boys that God had given to him. How he loved these young boys. He was the very best father. His father had been the very best father. He loved the Lord. And that love was manifested to these children. So at Christmas time this year, David was three years old. And they were getting the Christmas decorations out, and she could not have joy as David did because he loved to put the stockings up with little gifts in them, and he loved the decorations. So this was the first time that she had spent Christmas without Todd. And then she thought of something that was wonderful because she knew what had happened on the plane, which you're going to find out a lot about that later but she knew what had happened and she could thank God that he had such courage and strength and faith during the most difficult time of his life, knowing that he wasn't going to live, that this plane was going to go down. So she had joy that whatever he had done, maybe he had saved the plane from killing many other people that they had intended to do. Now, let me tell you one thing, that terrorist hates you. So God teaches us in his word what hate is. As a child of God, he says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, 
Well, let's read verse 12. It's talking about Cain. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, this is the devil, and slew his brother. You see, you have to have hatred before you can kill someone. Now listen what God says. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his f brothers righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Now this is what you're going to learn about being prepared for something that could happen to you. In these lessons, you can have the same faith that Lisa and his wife and Todd had because of their parents. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And we ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Now this is something that every person must understand. There's only one person in the world that is Jesus Christ is the only person, any person that doesn't know him is going to die and go out into eternity without Christ. Because of his great love, God's great love for us, he sent Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the whole world. He loves those people, the terrorists, but they have rejected his love. That's why there is so much evil in the world today. Now let me tell you what Christ wants us to do. Christ's call for service is not what we think it is, but it's what we are to him. That's his real service. And everything we do for him is done in love because of what he has done for me. So this is the life that Todd lived. So when he was a little boy, we told you that that was one of the most important things that he had to learn to pray. So he prayed at night before he went to bed. So, you know, it's just like you children. If you don't want to go to bed, you don't want to get dressed, put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, get ready for bed. You obey your parents in all things. So this one night, he was praying, and he was, his mother was there with him. And if you don't get down on your knees with your children, you husbands, or your wives, or whomever is keeping you, then we are failing these little children. So he started thanking God for all of the things in his room to prolong going to bed. So she told him that you know that God has given you every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, but you don't have to continue to mention everything. So he learned that the things that happened that he could, did not have any control over was God's will. He couldn't change God's will. And he wanted God's will in everything that he did. So he knew the word of God. He listened to his parents. He obeyed them. So one day he's out with his friend. Now remember, you are to have Christian friends that will pray with you, that love you, that will read the Bible with you. So he had a friend that he played with. He had lots of friends because everyone loved Todd. But this one day they were playing and they had lost the frog that they were playing with. So he, it was time for them to go home. They would not be late for dinner. They said, you go, after we go home, we will pray that God will help us to find the frog. So he went home. He was ready to go up in his room to pray. And Keith's mom called and said, tell Todd, that Keith prayed and he went out and found the frog. And he knew this was answer to prayer. 
everything that he did. He was not ashamed to ask someone to pray with him. That's the kind of friends we are to have as children of God. We are to love those around us, but we're not to do the things that they do because anyone that wants you to do wrong is your enemy. So he played the piano and he got bored at playing the piano. So he was lying down on the floor trying to play the piano with his toes. So his mother heard him and she came in. What are you doing? You see, there's no word in the Bible that says bored. Children should never say this word because there's too many things to do for the Lord. We should be busy for Him all the time, serving Him, giving someone a track, giving them a New Testament. You can still write to my number and get our New Testaments to get out the Word of God to your neighbors. If you love the Lord, you're going to serve Him in some way. So then he was a ball player. Oh, how he loved to play ball. So when he was in the eighth grade, his, he, played, he was, played shortstop, he played center field, and he was a pitcher. But this one day, see, he found this little frog. So this little boy was so excited because he loved to play ball, but he could not pitch as well as the other positions that he played. So they had a game. The game was tied in the last inning and he called for Todd to come out and to go pitch. He said, oh, I've got to get this guy out. I've got to get this guy out. He threw a pitch, came in pretty close. He threw another pitch, far away. He threw another one, he threw another one, and another one. And those were all balls. He walked, the bases were loaded, and he walked the winning man in that was on, winning boy in that was on third base. He walked off and he was a little angry and he thought, oh, I, just thinking about it, he had failed. His coach, his mom and dad were there. They were there for everything he did. So as he was walking off, he felt a hand on his shoulder. He had his head down. He said, son, his father did, you were in a tough spot out there. He said, yes, I know. And he said, you know, your coach believed in you. That's the reason he asked you to pitch. He knew you would do the very best. He said, yes, that's what worries me. But he said, if you do not have faith that you did your best, then you could not play ball. So you did your best, and that's all God wants you to do. And he learned through every experience that this was what God wants. You see, if you fail as giving out a Bible lesson or taking a track to a door that says, I don't want anything to do with that, or you give a New Testament to someone and they say, I don't want anything to do with religion. But you see, Christ is not religion. Christ has given us eternal life. Religion is something you do. So you cannot do enough to get to heaven. And you cannot obey the word of God enough to get to heaven. The only way you can get there is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So he knew that he had to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. So he could trust the Lord in everything and he would guide and direct him. So him and his sister went to Ohio. They lived in Illinois to their grandma's on their first plane ride. The plane was rough as could be, and his, he went to sleep. It, the s- streets were icy, and everything was cold, but Todd could go to sleep and trust the Lord. And his sister was afraid, but all of a sudden, she pushed him awake, 
And they both thanked God that the plane that they were on landed safe, although it skidded off the runway, but they were safe. And then after he did this, you know, he knew something every day was exciting. This young boy knew every day there was something exciting to do. Why? Because every morning, his mother, as a stay-at-home mom, read the Bible to him. She taught him the lesson in Proverbs. And every person should read Proverbs. Proverbs teaches us how wonderful God's Word is. And it says in Proverbs, for chapter 3, My son, forget not my law, but let my heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And then verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, he knew what that was. So he knew that God was directing him. He played sports, he played baseball, and he played soccer. So one day he's out on the soccer field, and he knew that he, this guy that was coming at him, he tried to hit the ball, but instead he hit Todd's jaw. His head hit him really hard, knocked his teeth out, and he picked, reached up and pulled his teeth out that was stuck up in his gums, and he put them in his pocket. Afterwards, he had no idea how bad he was. His jaw had to be wired back together. He couldn't eat any food for six weeks unless it was liquid. He could drink all liquids. Then he also said, I am going to be able to talk, which he could just barely whisper, so people can understand me, and I'm not going to lose any weight. He drank everything that they put in the blender. He didn't lose any weight, and the people could understand him. So he had a desire to obey the Lord, and he did not complain because this happened to him. So one day after this, he, was in, he went to a Christian school. He went to Wheaton College after this. But when he was playing ball at Wheaton, he came to Florida for a ball game. And the, this time, it was amazing because he was on the other end. It was the la last inning. The score was tied. And he got up. And he knocked the winning run in. Everybody was praising him and thanking him and gi giving him all the glory. He knew that only God could earn and praise that he had been taught. He said, without me, you can do nothing. And he knew this was the Lord. So he knew that he thought, after this, he thought, you know, I know that I am not to be praised, but the professional players, I like the Chicago Cubs, he lived in Chicago, I like the Bulls, the Chicago Bulls, and he had a shirt with the number of one of the Bulls. He said, if anybody needs praise as an athlete, they do because of what they do. But he did not give praise to them, he gave praise to the Lord for giving them talent to do what they did. So then, when he was in college, at Wheaton College, he said to his friends one day, I know I see the, I found the girl that I'm going to marry. He said, you have found the girl you're going to marry? Oh, yes, I know who she is, Lisa. He said, Lisa, you know that she's engaged to another, uh, nearly engaged to another boy? Oh, no, he said, this can't happen, and he bent over like, oh, it can't happen. But then he said, he was waiting on the Lord. And so he knew her brother, Paul. So she was looking at Todd's life. She 
asked her friend if she knew anything about Todd Beamer. She said, why are you interested in Todd Beamer? She said, I don't know. He's a good athlete and he's not stuck on himself. And I have been watching him. So she prayed about it. She thought about it. And then he had had a class with her all this semester and they both had been watching each other. They were asking God to give them the right person to marry. So she talked to her youth pastor. She talked to her mom and she quit dating this other boy. And when she did, someone told Todd, she came to Chicago to get a job, told Todd that Lisa and her boyfriend were not together anymore. You must ask her out. So he, he was so excited that he could ask Lisa out. So he asked her if she would go out, and she said yes. Now remember, they both prayed about this decision. So one Saturday night when they were going out to eat, the first date that they had, she and him were walking in the, down the street in Chicago, and the wind was blowing terrible. They had to wait two hours to get in to eat. When they waited two hours, they thought, oh, maybe our conversation has, we're still talking and we still are excited about each other. So while she's thinking about this, she said, I think he may be a keeper. He has a great sense of humor and he loves the Lord like I do. So they started talking all the time. And as you hear these lessons, you're going to see how when you desire God's will, He will guide every step of the way. Now, first, I want to ask any of you that don't know Christ as Savior, today you can call upon Him to save you. If you believe that He died for you, He died instead of you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is what he wants you to do. And you know, and I give you this lesson all the time. This is what he says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Next week, I'm going to give you the lessons on what happened to Todd and what happened to Lisa's father. You are going to love these lessons. This is the very best missionary story we've ever told. Every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary too.